Hi, I'm Dr. Todd Lizon, helping you live naturally in an unnatural world. I want to speak to you today about what you are not being told about LED lights if you're using them for brain health. And the use of LEDs in low-level laser therapies for brain health has exploded over the last number of years. And I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. It's actually a good thing. But what I am going to show you today is that you might be missing a big piece of the picture and you really may want to consider adding on to what the current therapy is you're doing if you want to get the maximum benefits. Before we get into it, consider this idea to make sure that you're in the right frame of mind. We lose the forest for the trees. So if I zoom in here, what do you see? A whole lot of nothing, just a small area. You lose the context of the big picture if you zoom into one thing too closely. And that is what I fear is happening with the field of photobiomodulation. We're not thinking big picture and we're just zooming in and trying to isolate singular wavelengths and singular theories on how it works. I would be willing to say, and the literature is backing this up, that there's a much bigger picture out there that we need to understand. And I want to help you with your brain health. So you need to follow through to the end of this video to see what the actual suggestion on what to do is. The first study I want to bring your attention to is this, and it's called mid infrared light treatment, not near or red. That's the important point. Mid infrared light treatment attenuates cognitive decline and alters the gut microbiota community in APP slash PS1 mouse model. You can look up the study for yourself if you don't believe what I'm about to tell you, but what it's actually saying is the use of mid infrared, and that's the wavelengths from 7,700 nanometers to 10,000 nanometers. Now, photobiomodulation, as most people use it, consists of red light around 680 nanometers and near infrared light 850 into the 900s. 900s. This is into the 7700s and up. This is heat, people. This is not anything other than heat and it's called mid infrared. And here's what the study found when it comes to brain health. Number one, this is in mice, it found that it improves learning and memory abilities. Number two is it reduced the plaques in the brain on these Alzheimer's induced mice. Sorry, Parkinson, Alzheimer's. And number three is it altered the gut microbiome. Now, if you think about it, this all happened with zero red or near infrared light. How? How is that happening? We need to see the four. We don't want to lose the forest for the trees. There are other ideas out there on how this works. Now, before I get to that, let me share with you a second study. And this one here is called Sauna Bathing is Inversely Associated with Dementia and Alzheimer's Disease in Middle-Aged Finnish Men. Sauna in this situation was not a near-infrared sauna. It was an old-fashioned Finnish sauna, pure water on the rocks, heat. Again, heat is mid-infrared and far-infrared. So this study found over a 20-year period that there was a decrease in dementias and Alzheimer's from simply using the sauna. Now, what do they have in common? Heat, mid-infrared is what they share in common. And we need to be aware in this photobiomodulation world that there are alternate theories as to how this works. It is not all about the chrome, cytochrome C oxidase. I was going to say chromophore, but cytochrome C oxidase theory. This is not all about that. There are other ways that this works, and I've done other videos on this. There are things like chlorophyll that could be driving photobiomodulation. And what I think is happening here is water is driving this process here. When you apply mid-infrared light to water, it decreases the viscosity and it increases the volume. And it's theorized that this might be one of, if not the main, driving forces behind this type of therapy. 
So to summarize, mid-infrared light had all of these changes on brain health, not the red and the near-infrared light. I, I want you to continue using the LED panels and, and helmets and things like that that they're using because they're, they're actually really quite beneficial. But what I'm saying is you might not have been given the whole big picture. And I feel that most people would benefit by adding on the full spectrum of light. We need to add on the mid and the far infrared, the heat component to get the full benefits. We cannot lose the forest for the trees. Sunlight, the natural source of this light, has all the wavelengths, all of them, not just 660 or 850. We're losing the forest for the trees and we need to get back to big picture thinking. My suggestion is that people should add a near infrared sauna to their therapy. When you use a near infrared sauna, you're going to get all kinds of wavelengths in the traditional photobiomodulation stimulation band, mitochondrial stimulation band, your 660s, your 850s, and so on. But you'll also get the mid and the far infrared, which means you may be getting more benefits in more ways than just with the heatless 850 and 680 nanometers. So a near infrared sauna is what I would suggest is the big picture what you're not being told when it comes to brain health and LED lights. I really hope that's helpful. Please help us out here. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button so that you get up to date information or feel free to share this information on Facebook or wherever else your social media takes you. We'd really appreciate it. I'm Dr. Todd Lizon. Until next time, keep well.